Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archived classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from the Bhakti Center in New York, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Walk on Wednesday. Walk on Wednesdays when we take somebody from our, generally our Zoom community, but not necessarily, but um, we've got a whole gang of people from Zoom who watch this every day. That, that's saying nothing about the others out there. There's others out there, Kostub, you know that. Watch every, listen, watch, listen every day. Hmm. But the Zoomers here, I see their face, so they get special credit because like I know them, they're sort of p- part of my morning ritual. And uh, today we have David Charles Wilson. That name comes up a lot, right? Welcome, David. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, Yeah, you sound great. Good morning. You know, sometimes we just got to pick out people in there, just pick their brain a little. How are you? Um, I can't remember how we met. How did you you end up here? How did I end up here? Well, um, there was a... Well, you guys were on pilgrimage, your last pilgrimage, so a year and a half ago. Right. Yeah. Um, you were traveling with a dear friend and colleague of mine, and um, we had been following colleague. Uh, Bashak Ganiden is, is her name. She lives on the Upper West Side, practices yoga, spirituality. She works with Yogi Charu. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, all of these crossover coincidences coincidences were occurring where she would be in the background of one of your Instagram stories um, <laughs> we'll head uh, to or, <laughs> or Parmananda would be beside her at Kirtan in her story and um, you know I had been following you guys on Instagram and I knew you guys as musicians and um, I had been reading Bhagavad Gita with her mm-hmm. in a small group of people uh, weekly and um, we sort of discovered this uh, sangha, this uh, this class, wisdom of the sages, um, together, and I had been working outside of Boston and would listen every day as another for maybe I'd say from episode ten through episode thirty. But then, wow. uh, uh, when you guys came back from pilgrimage, um, the Joe Rogan thing happened and you came to Boston all within like two or three days of each other. And I met you in Boston at Boston Yoga Union, Boston Yoga Union. So that's sometimes Krishna converges upon you and it's like, it becomes over, it becomes an overwhelming. Yes. That you almost can't say no to. <laughs> it sounds like it happened. It just got, it just sort of got it built up to a head with you. Well, like, like Liam Wilson had mentioned, um, on a walk on Wednesday long ago, he came from transcendental meditation and I'd been practicing that. Um, Previously, I grew up in a very non-religious family. There were two churches in my hometown in Vermont, um, a red one and a white one. And that's what they were referred to as. And we used them as the auditorium. I have no idea what denomination they are even now, (laughs) but, but um, you know, transcendental meditation 
kind of came into my life and opened me up, I think initially to what became um, a, a kind of uh, whatever you call yourself a seeker or, a, mm -hmm. or it, it definitely made me aware that there was something more important to, to, to look into. Mm -hmm. And so I just needed teaching and that See, kind of became something that this class has taken on in my life and uh, my associations with you guys. Hmm. And you're an, I just want to share, you're an artist and a, and a designer, right? Like a clothing designer. Uh, I've, I have a fine arts degree in, in background, but um, I've had to make my living as a designer and a creative director and, um, those are things that as we study and, you know, through this past year, um, especially it becomes um, something of a conflict with this I idea of austerity and this idea of designing consumer goods. There's a, there's a contradiction. So these are things that you, you help me work out, work through. Hmm. Um, well, you design hats. Can you work for Kangol? Yeah, I worked for Kangle for a long time. <laughs> you didn't just we were work having for a Kangle. special. He was like the number one creative director for Kangle. Well, you could set the trends. You could make one with a peacock feather in it. There's ways to work th through this. <laughs> with like, like hair jewel, coming out yeah. of the side, yeah. hair coming down the side of peacock feather, mm -hmm. and then a, a tea lock thing that just floats over your nose to keep you warm in the winter. I could see this already, David Charles. A kangaroo with a tea lock on it. Yeah. <laughs> But you know the thing that strikes me about David is from I you know I first saw him coming around to Super Soul Farm for different events that we do up there, and he was just always that guy that was like quietly ready to serve, like to you know like, you, you know there's that story that we hear in, that Radha Swami tells about that one uh, disciple of a guru in, in South India who says you know what is a real Vaishnava what is a real Bhakti Yogi and he says well you have to go ask someone and he has to walk through the jungle for miles and miles and finally find that guru and when he gets to the guru you know basically he has to wait months just to ask this question and then he finally gets a chance to ask you know what what is a real bhakti yogi like and he says what did he say he's like a chicken he's like salt a crane and like you right and then then he's like okay <laughs> he turns around and walks all the way back <laughs> And he asks his guru, you know, like, what does this mean? But like the one about salt, it's such an important one, right? And it's it's one that Radha Swami really glorifies. It's like salt makes everything better, but you know, it's it's not standing out in front, right? It's like nobody eats a dish and says like, oh, this salt and this is so good. But without the salt, it's like it's got no flavor, right? Mm. And David Charles was I just see he he'll, he's totally like willing to take that background, but like most important roles, you know, like. Mm. And to to make things happen, so it's it's really just like a pure desire to serve without any kind of um, need for for recognition or external reciprocation. It's all like that internal reciprocation. I, I want to serve. And it's just like the, I think it's a really beautiful quality that he has. Well, thank you. But the you know the the idea of um, service we talk about all the time as mm -hmm. as being a key tenant of of what we're learning about and being invited to save a weekend um at the you know kind of pretty early on into the pandemic when a lot of us had been alone um really imprinted on me um how how important this association is and just being at Super Soul and working with a group of people um, for a, a common goal um, was was so valuable and and foundational for me. And so, you, you, whenever you have these gatherings, uh, you know, of devotees or people that are in this community, um, you 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 won't really just want to be back in that place as soon as possible. Everybody has to disband and go back into their uh, material lives, you know, on Monday morning or whatever. And um, you spend a lot of time 
looking for an opportunity to get back to that place to help and to offer service again. So um, that's, that's an important driver. Yeah, well, you're focused on the essence, I think. Mm. Prabhu, this is beautiful. And I think um, we're, you went through a split up before you came, before you got into Bhakti, or did that happen after you got into Bhakti? Well, as things happen in life, it, it was all kind of everything happens at once. Mm. Um, you know, I, I was actually having uh, a, an online Gita class and uh, my former wife sat down with me and uh, um, and said, you know, after 19 years that, you know, she, she was going through some things and she wanted to go elsewhere. Wow. And um, during the Gita class, right, right as I logged out and um, and and, uh, you know, it was terrifying, a brave thing, um, but it was, uh, you know, something that was happening right at the right as the country was going into lockdown. So, mm. Well, we all had a, you know, a lot of time to think about our lives during those first weeks and months. So, hmm. um, you know, I had a job to take care of the house, take care of the cats, skim the pool, whatever those, you know, things to keep the end <laughs> and uh, wake up and sit in on, on this class. And, uh, you know, the, this became my daily association. This, these were this group here, you know, are my friends and, uh, you know, we're how many months in now? And uh, here we still are. Mm. I, I um, moved to Brooklyn because it had been the longest period in my life since 1997 that I hadn't been in New York City. And, uh, you know, I really threw the political unrest and, uh, you know, the people that were affected by the pandemic here, I, my, my heart really felt you know, attached to this place. And, you know, one of the last places I had been before lockdown had been Kirtan at the Bhakti Center on a Thursday night, their last mm -hmm. one. And so I just wanted to get back closer to this and, and build a new life here. And, you know, as you know, at one of the uh, Super Soul weekends, I, I met an amazing person, a fellow devotee, and, and she and I are together kind of learning a new life and the beautiful and, ariana Lindbergh. yeah we yeah. call it an, we call it an arranged marriage <laughs> tuesday is that, is that what you call an arranged marriage <laughs> <laughs> just put them together you two how about you two <laughs> no it wasn't an arranged but they did meet at super soul <laughs> okay as did a few others i think michelle Ber berger and banjo mike met at the super soul too uh, there, i should just turn it into couples. like a, i should just turn it into the the uh, uh, Bhakti Lonely Hearts uh, Gathering. Well, in all seriousness, we do have to get, do, do that. We do have to get our- Oh, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. <laughs> I know. I told Mara, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm gonna, she's not, she's, I'm just gonna say, hey, dress up really nice and come over, we're having a party. And I just put on a sari, and she's gonna walk right into her own wedding one day. She's not gonna even realize what's happening. I put this garland on, don't, no, not, not on you. Put it on the first guy that walks over to you when I drop a veil. That's the <laughs> that's your guy. That's your guy. Anyway, was the last question with the importance. So you're with the person for 19 years and they left you. And now you're like and you're sitting in the middle of New Hampshire where you lived. I think I was in Southern. I was outside of Boston. Outside of, I'm sorry. Outside of Boston. And I'm thinking. Yeah. Did the Bhagavatam. Could you use it? Could you apply it? Did it work for you? Did it help? Did it ease some of the pain of existence? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, we were applying things daily. Um, the Bhagavatam was 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 new to me through class. So so initially, you take this kind of macro approach, and you're learning, you know, key principles and and major um, lessons, and then as as you've led us through, um, you know, you start to learn the finer points. I, I would say that I'm not the greatest uh, hot seat contestant, 
in yeah. terms of trivia and details but um, what's what's amazing is that i'm starting to know the answers to some of <laughs> the hot seat questions well Maybe that is the goal careful. as my classmates but, <laughs> careful when you um, get Rogenoff going here <laughs> no and and so so i'll give you that blank stare when when you even mention the hot seat but okay <laughs> Anyway, thanks for joining the show. It's a pleasure to have you in my life and into the part of this family. We have such a, it's actually a family here and we love Ariana and we're so happy for both you guys. Thank you both. And thank you all three of you for everything you do. Thank you so thank much, you. brother. Ah, yeah, the Bhagavatam's there when you need it. I've, uh, yeah, I was in such a grumpy mood last night. I had a grump, I had a tough day and, um, and then it was sweet baby Krishna time. And I was like, and Justin had a hard day too. Justin, me and Justin were just pouting around the house. <laughs> I thought Justin was going to go out on Harinam. He, he did. did. He danced yeah. in Harinam for three did that hours. Lift his spirits? He danced for three yeah. hours. Yeah, I don't know why you weren't happy after that, <laughs> Justin. <laughs> he was. And then he had a bad, yeah, he had a bad night. So anyway, we were both grumping around the house. I was like, and I got to do sweet baby Krishna on top of this. As soon as I opened that book and saw the devotees, huh. it's something about seeing devotees that brings your heart up. And that's a good thing. If you're happy when you see the devotees, that's a good thing. And then you started reading Krishna's Leela, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. You know, Mara sends me a warning message. It's a good thing. Hey, don't forget, sweet baby Krishna, it's a good thing. <sighs> you, know what else, you know what else I did that was really therapeutic for me the other day, Kasu? I was at my, I was at my mom's. This is good. If you're going through, oh, some... you went through the old stuff. You started yeah! going through. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I you went through. It so. was therapy for me. It was therapy. Was it? For me. You sh okay. Because that yeah. could be the other way. It could work the other way. You start to go down this whole reminiscing kind of thing. But it wasn't yeah. like that for you. Nah. Okay. <laughs> nah. Reminisce of things that never were. <laughs> <laughs> so how, you how is it therapeutic? It's therapeutic because you see, okay. Your photographs and stuff. Here's me. When my kids were little, my mom had us all these photos. Okay. And so I posted a bunch of them the other day. Um, and then, so the photos of, okay, here's me when I was just married when the kids were little, mm. you know? And then and, and here's me um, before I was even married. And here's me when I was 16. Here's me and my dad who's not alive anymore. Oh, man, here's me and my older brother as a baby with my dad. Mm. Oh, here's my mom and dad before they had kids and it's one of these things it's like oh i get it we're all dying <laughs> it was like one of these things like this thing's gonna be over in a moment yeah. like i remember that picture of me with the black spiked cu the cure haircut with my mom and and dad and i was like that was a moment ago i remember when my daughter was born that was a moment ago mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this world works like that, that was it's a perspective a moment. shift you had a little bhagavatam perspective shift little bhagavatam perspective i met like the i remember these original devotees you know bhagavat maharaj you know bhagavat used to you know preach to me he ran that store ayurveda in the east village he used to tell mm -hmm. me about krishna and he was you know he was a young young man he was a young man and now he's a he's, sannyasi yeah, it's hard for us to go there he was younger than us now back then but it's always hard to put that together right i know we were you know we were i was like 18 when i met him he was probably he was like 30 less than 40 maybe yeah probably 30, yeah maybe yeah. older than that maybe. yeah but that now period. he's a sannyasi you know this these are the faces of life and this is the beauty i think of photographs too not just to lament lament like oh the old days it's right now it's okay. right now i'm alive right now what am i doing about it and you his know, body is continuously changing yeah hmm? It's funny that you mentioned all this because just it was either, I think it was this morning or I was I, I remember somehow I was taking a shower was it this morning or last night or something like that and I was thinking about you and I was thinking about you do, you're going into a new stage of life here right I feel like it's a new door new chapter yeah. but what what I was thinking of both you and I this is it this is the um, home stretch to eternity you know it's it's you know what I'm saying it's like. <laughs> You're on the home stretch to eternity, Rogan. That's you like know? a song. I'm on the home stretch. <laughs> <laughs> to eternity. 
I'm on yeah. the home. We're on the home stretch. Nah, 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 nah. Like a gang vocal. Yeah, just exactly like that. And, and uh, <laughs> but but it, it's a fact because you know, like, what is it? You know, we got you know maybe got twenty, thirty years left, but that's a short time. It's a stone's throw away from death. Who are we kidding? Yeah, so it's just <laughs> it's time to focus. You know, to to that's really like, feeling. Yeah, you can't. You, it's like you can't be like. Oh, you know, let me build a whole nother world. No, let's not build a whole nother world, right? Let's just let's just like step out of this world and into eternity. Even J- Bakta Justin's old. <laughs> Bakta Justin, you're getting old. <laughs> He's getting old. Well, you know what I said to him? I was like, we were we went to Whole Foods last night for a late night Akadasi binge session, and um, <laughs> we did good. We basically ate nothing all day. Except uh-huh. the, and then he made me this incredible bowl of veggies, and I was like, okay, now let's binge. And so we went, and we went to a late night. Oh, Krishna, we went to Whole Foods, and I'm looking around New York City. I'm doing the New York City thing, and I'm looking around. I go, oh, I get it. I'm older than everybody here, <laughs> practically speaking. You know, there's a few old people around, but I'm everyone's young, and now I'm the old guy looking, and I feel like I'm the old guy. I remember looking up at old guys. I remember what old guys look like. I'm that. Yeah. And it's confronting. And it's okay because Bhakti goes nicely with age. It goes wonderful. It goes the best with age because you're taking all those life lessons and applying truth and wisdom to it. And you're taking some jewel from it instead of taking bitterness from it. The only yeah. option is bitterness. Oh, oh, my youth. Fear. Oh, I remember. Playing that club over there. Mm. I remember hanging out on this court. I mean, we're in the neighborhood right now where you and I used to hang out as teenagers. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm and I, I feel like such an, you know, I'm walking across the Williamsburg Bridge on a Joppa walk with Bob to Justin going, really? yep. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, this is where all the homeboys used to hang out. And we used to get our, you know, this is, I used to go to a hip hop club there. And we used to, I live in Rivington Street. This place was a ghetto. I was like, I am sick of hearing myself talk. It's like, oh, the girl. <laughs> Yeah, it was great back then. Oh, and run DMC. <laughs> I was like, just shut up. <laughs> That's the point, though. Yeah, it's like it's home stretch. You know, you just for- forget about the past and move into the future. And, 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 you know, the whole culture that grows out of Bhagavatam, you know, the, the true Vedic culture, the, the true yoga culture. It recognized this and it built right into the lifestyle. Like everyone was supposed to get this, you know, that like, you know, you're 50 years old, you retire, you know, your kids take over everything and you get ready for your home stretch. You know? Yeah, it's a home stretch and it's, it, and it's okay. You don't have to pretend, no, there's no home stretch. I'm younger than ever. I'm doing <laughs> CrossFit now. I'm, I'm CrossFit home stretch. making me stronger. I'm better than I ever was. We don't care. It's not about that. It's, okay. it, it's, it's spiritually connected. It's spiritually connected as I as I as I as I walk through this life in a noble way and do and leave something behind, leave something for everybody around me and leave something for generations after me. That's a great way to look at it. What what legacy could I leave? Can I can I have a legacy here? Then leave something after me. Mm. It's big stuff. I love it. Love it. Yeah. Steve Riley just wrote something in- interesting on the board here. So good. Needed to hear this. I've been hearing a lot of people talking down about the world, the world and governments lately. And yes, we are all going to die in the blink of an eye. <laughs> yeah. Right when you're getting to the conspiracy theory about the 1% and the, you know, it's, it's all going down and there's people moving, the puppeteers moving us. It's just like, well, they're, they're going to die too. Everyone's going to die. <laughs> Even the 1% dying. Yeah. No one's going to beat that one. Bill Gates is going to die, too, somehow. He hasn't. He's not going to embalm himself or freeze himself like Walt Disney. He's all dying. So wherever we're at, the question is, we're dying. Now what? What are we going to do about that? That's right. Oh, by the way, now moving on. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. It was, yeah, no, that was, that was nice. Um, I just want to mention quick that for Patreon subscribers, they got a kirtan from Raghunath from the picnic. That that was dropped yesterday on Patreon. Ooh, oh, Did you see that? I didn't see it. It's your Sri Krishna Govinda thing. Is it any good? Yeah, it's great. Okay. You kidding me? All yeah. right. So that's that's available uh, on Patreon. I also put up a lecture that I gave on Saturday on Patreon. So a lot happened on Patreon. 
Well, good. Eh? Well, yeah. come and join. Join that little party, that Patreon party we have at patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. Yeah. We appreciate everybody who supports us. We really do. We like to keep this going. We want to keep it going forever. Wouldn't it be great if we do this forever? <laughs> well, that's what you do in the spiritual world. That's the point. In bhakti yeah. yoga, the means is the same as the end. You're just doing the same thing. In the spiritual yeah. realm, what are they doing? They're talking about Krishna. That's it. And it gets more and more refined. You become more and more joyous. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you, when you look back at the past, they actually were joyous. Instead of like, oh, remember those times? Those were good. <laughs> and, but if you actually think it through what happened at those times, well, I was an alcoholic. But yeah, <laughs> it was good. But I was a drug addict. <laughs> and yeah, I remember did. when we were kids, it was so great. W weren't we like totally angry and upset? And <laughs> I was yeah, totally angry, right. upset, breaking things, <laughs> nearly arrested many times. <laughs> <laughs> You can actually reminisce over time. Like I'm reminisce. I reminisce with Costuba, like things that actually were like, mm -hmm. I remember walking barefoot through the jungles of Mayapur mm -hmm. and sleeping in a, like a shack that was a, there was a giant loom. Do you remember this? Where they make saris yeah. or something? No, or, they were making gumptures there. They were making like towels and it was just like a loom. In a shack. It, with, it, it was with in no one walls. of those kind like of thatch, thatch kind of yeah. huts. Kind of. I don't even think it had walls. It, it was just like a shed. Well, there was course. another one where we slept in the kind of, it was like someone, it was like in someone's village home and they kind of had like this raised platform made out of earth and that one didn't, and that one just had like a thatched little ceiling over it. I remember that. It had no walls. But the loom one had the thatched walls. We had there. thatched walls. So this is one of these things I can reminisce and be like, yeah. That was wonderful. That yeah. was wonderful. Uh, I wish we had some pictures of that. Yeah, we don't. We don't. <sighs> reminiscing. And reminiscing. <laughs> <laughs> What's that song? <laughs> Is it the Little River Band? <laughs> <laughs> you know all these songs. <laughs> all right. We'll Bob go dancing in the park, walking in the dark and reminiscing. See, they're trying to get you deeper into illusion. It's like go back into the illusion. No, we're on the home stretch. We're yeah, not going no. back into illusion. We're not going to reminisce. We're going to be here right, right here right now. Yeah, that's right. Right here right now. Because it's real. Right here is right now. Good. Ma Mary, you're intoxicated by youth, I think. You're intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> <laughs> She's hitting her home stretch, too. Yeah, I'm not that far behind you, Rago. Yeah. yeah, you are. In a moment. Does she see? She's good. She's got the body. Very of sober. It's just a She's moment. got the of a time goggles on. Yeah. It's a good set of goggles to wear. Why don't okay. we put them on right now? All right. Narayanam namaskritya naram jayiva narotamam devim sarasvatim vyasam tato jayam madiraye. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Badrishu, Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya, and Bhagavati Tamashloke, Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki. By regular attendance and classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated, and loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Gyana Tamurandasya Gyananjana Salakya Chaksurun Militam Yena Tazmai Shri Guraveda Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my respect at their lotus like feet. Reading from the third can of chapter 15 Description of God. Kingdom the description of, God. of the kingdom of God. And we're right. all the way on chapter text. When do we. Hey, Mara. Mara, when do we say the 500th episode is? Uh, July 29th, if we don't miss any shows. That's coming soon. It is coming soon. What We're on episode we... 492 today. We've got what? eight to go. It's next week. Yeah, so it's next Thursday. What are we going to do? If we don't know. Suggestions. We'll take suggestions. Yeah, write it on the board if you got a good idea for the 500th show. Costumes? <laughs> That's the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> Dress up like one of the characters of the Bhagavatam. Oh, that that's exciting. 
Who would Mara be? Just as long as you don't come as Sugar Day to go swimming, I'm cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> He's naked, by the way, if you missed that joke. <laughs> Who could Mara be? Oh, so many people. She could be Dropity. Dropity. Be... I thought of Dropity yeah. too. Yeah. Dropity. Queen Kunti. Yeah. Yeah. Putana, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> like sassy witch? <laughs> oh, hide your children! <laughs> okay. Okay. What text are we on, Margie? Well, you know, what, what uh, are we on? 44. We're 44. 44. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can have a little recap here. Because 43 was a huge verse. Right. 43 was the verse where now Lord Vishnu has appeared. You see, what's going on here, Raghuna? It's something that goes, it's something that goes on in, in many ways in the Bhagavatam. The, the Bhagavatam is the book that's clarifying all the other books, right? Like, for instance, Upanishads, right? Such important books, such, you know, deep spiritual messages in them. But you could walk away reading the Upanishads. You could, you could think like, oh, the highest thing is just like, renouncing the material world and finding peace right right right. that you know to mukti we were talking about it yesterday right sounds good right sounds good from material suffering yeah that could be the peak the the ultimate like everything is like that's the highest thing just to know that i'm not this body i'm spirit and to become free from the sufferings of maybe that's like the highest thing but what the bhavatam is going to do is it's going to it's going to highlight it's going to show us it's going to say we're going to show you Someone that's got that, right? That's that's not only got that, but that's got it on a super high level that everybody really respects them. So, you know, you have Shukadeva Goswami, right? Mm. He's like, he's got it, right? He's got that freedom from any material entanglement on a super high level. You just look at him, you know. And to prove it, you know, they have those examples like it even compares him to his father, Vyasadeva. Now, Vyasadeva, I mean, he's the yogi that wrote all these books. He wrote the Upanishads, right? Right. So, so, so you know, there's that story about how um, Sugadev Goswami is, a, is just a young man, just like leaves home and he's, he's wandering naked to, in his spiritual trance. And he walks by all these um, girls that are bathing in, in, the, in, a, in a pond. And they're all naked. But, and when they see him, he was so otherworldly that they didn't even feel like the need to cover their bodies or anything. Cause they just knew he's like, he's not creeping on us. Yeah. It was just so and somewhere visceral, else. right. That it was like, they, they all kind of like simultaneously, they all kind of got it. Yeah. And then Vyasadev came by and they all covered up. Right. And, and, and he's just real Vyasadev. So it, it's just, it's just, you know, these things have a, they're not just like trivial, things being mentioned it's illustrating something that that Shukadev Goswami was like he was like super 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 detached from the things of this world like it, more than anyone mm. but he became interested in bhakti he became interested in hearing the pastimes of Krishna he became interested in devotional service and so there's you know that important verse that we um we alluded to yesterday that um the the Atmarama verse, right? Mm. Where Sutta Goswami is is speaking about, you know, because c- it was asked, why would Sukadev Goswami get into bhakti, get into hearing Krishna's pastimes, which seem like they're about form and about relationship and about the things of the, isn't that the material realm where there's form and, and there's, you know, individuality, mm. duality, you know? Duality. Yeah. And so uh, Sutta Goswami says, all different varieties of atmaramas and atmaramas means those that take pleasure in the self not in anything external they're entirely you know uh focused within and he says especially those established on the path of self-realization though freed from all kinds of material bondage they have mukti right they desire to render unalloyed devotional service unto the personality of godhead this means that the lord possesses transcendental qualities and therefore can attract everyone, including liberated souls. So it's saying that there, there is transcendental form, transcendental qualities, right? The word guna is qualities. And we think that being liberated or having mukti means you're free from the influence of any gunas, any qualities. Everything just merges into a divine light, and, you know, without any qualities. Just like, you know, it's different qualities and the different dualities that bring suffering, isn't it? This is, so Bhagavatam is trying to clear that up. 
starts by showing us the examples of Sukadev Goswami. He was he had mukti, but then he went further still to bhakti. And what we're seeing here is the same things happening with the four kumaras, mm. right? They 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 had mukti. They they were super elevated, you know. But their but their connection had not developed onto the person. They hadn't developed that personal love for God. And that's what's happening right at this moment when Lord Vishnu appears before them. They were told about this by their father Brahma, but now they're experiencing and something's being ignited in their hearts. Mm. And so we read about that in text 43 when it said, when the breeze carrying the aroma of the Tulsi leaves from the toes of the lotus feet of the personality God had entered the nostrils of those sages, the four Kumars, they experienced a change. Right Both after of, the show, right after the show, I was well, doing my puja yesterday and sniffing and i was <laughs> as i was putting the tulsi it's not leaves happening where's the change like, uh, no it was i felt transformed <laughs> I felt by the smell yeah. of the tulsi leaves awesome i was thinking of that verse did you have bodily horripilation uh, oh yeah sometimes? horripilations <laughs> everywhere okay so it said when they when that entered their nostrils of those sages they experienced a change in both body and mind even though they were attached to the impersonal brahman understanding so even though they had that super high level of you know, equanimity and peace and all that. When they smelled that, it wasn't just like, oh, you know, there are different smells. This smells good. This smells bad. So I just reject, you know, I'm not interested. No, this was a transcendental aroma. This was a transcendental form. It was, it was, it was changing their minds and they're realizing there is such a thing as spiritual form, spiritual qualities, divine love. And that's what's happening to the four Kumars right now. All right. I'm still thinking about costumes. <laughs> Forget the costumes. <laughs> you want to come as the four Kumars? <laughs> as long as you're clothed, I'm okay with. You know, like I got to give you some leeway, Rogan. Right? You got to express yourself. We get as creative, as... but you got to have clothes yeah, on. There has to be a costume. I was dressed <laughs> okay. with the atmosphere. For the four directions. <laughs> okay. Okay. Text forty-five. Text forty-four. Text forty-four. The Lord's beautiful face appeared to them like the inside of a blue lotus. And the Lord's smile appeared to be a blossoming jasmine flower. After seeing the face of the Lord, the sages were fully satisfied. And when they wanted to see him further, they looked upon the nails of his lotus feet, which resembled rubies. Thus, they viewed the Lord's transcendental body again and again. And so they finally achieved meditation on the Lord's personal feature. There you go. Imagine that stunning, stunning view. Oh, man. It, I, that's why I love that painting so much, which I shared in the Sage page the other yeah. day, or the newsletter. But, um, yeah, because it's that moment of awakening. It, it, I, find that, I find that moment so fascinating. Um, and, and here, you know, I, I look for things in Bhagavatam. Like, I find that the second chapter of the first canto kind of lays out everything that we need to know. And then you find... Um, you find it illustrated or fluffed out in in the in the rest of the Bhagavatam, mm. and so where the whole Bhagavatam starts is it it talks about finding satisfaction, right? What did this verse say that uh, the sages were fully satisfied, right? After seeing the face of the Lord, the sages were fully satisfied. Yeah, and so it, what happens with the beginning of the Bhagavatam is the sages at Naimi Sharanya, and they're asking Sutta Goswami. How does someone find Atma Supersidity, complete satisfaction in the self? Right? You know, because we've read all these books. We, they're saying you understand all of Vyasadeva's works, all of the Vedic literature better than anyone. Mm. But it seems like there's so many messages there. Is it through impersonal meditation? Is it through piety? You know, like, like the four Vedas teach, you know, like material piety. It, it brings good results. Is that how one finds complete satisfaction of the soul? Atma Supersidity? Or could it be through renouncing the material world, like the Upanishads are teaching, you know, and, and just letting go? Is that how one finds Atma Supersidity? But here we see that the four sages had let go of everything material, but they still were not, they still hadn't been fully satisfied. Mm. But here it says, after seeing the face of the Lord. Because the, the, what Sutta, Sutta answers with that very famous, super important, fundamental verse, right? Savai Pungsa Paro Dharmo, that the highest Dharma. For all humanity, um, you told bhakti or hoksaje is is performing bhakti that is a hoitiki and apratiyata, which is totally selfless and, and continuous. You know, like that's 
And he says, that's what brings Atma supersidity. That's what brings complete satisfaction mm. of the soul. So you have Great these verse, huh? Great it's, verse. It's, it, it the Supreme Dharma. Everything. This yeah. is a great one. The Supreme Dharma. It's because we speak about Dharma and the Bhagavad Gita speaks of Dharma and everybody from India is like, oh, do your Dharma. But it's saying the actual perfection of Dharma, the Aro Supreme Dharma, Dharma yeah. is when you are directly in love with the divine. And if it's not bringing you, if Dharma is not bringing you to deep love with the divine, it's a useless waste of time. Right. It's a useless waste that's, of time. All yeah, of our dharma, all of our that. ethics, all of our culture, all of our morality, if it's not bringing to pure love of God, you're wasting your time. Mm. Th those verses are so crucial in that second chapter. So, yeah, after he says second that. Second chapter, first canto. Second chapter, first canto, divinity and divine service. You know, after he says that, his next verse kind of like addresses the idea of, well, what about renunciation? The kind of renunciate, knowledge, jnana and vairagya. Right. What about jnana and vairagya? Isn't that what the Upanishads teach is the way to Atma Supersidity? And he, his response mm. is, no, that jnana and vairagya, they're not the highest things. As a matter of fact, when you perform bhakti, when you give your heart entirely to God, jnana and vairagya, they just come along with you without you even trying for them. You naturally let go of everything material. You naturally see everything as it truly is. Right? Wow. And then the next question is, well, what about the Dharma that's spoken about in the four Vedas? You know, what about, what about, you know, offering sacrifice to the gods and being kind and charitable and generous and so mm. on and so forth? It, it seems that the four Vedas are teaching that's the way to Atma Super City. And, and, then, and then it says exactly what you're saying, that if all of that Dharma doesn't lead to an eagerness to hear about the transcendental qualities of God, and, you know, with feelings of love, then actually all that's a waste of time because you just you just stay in a cycle that never ends you know like trying to get good it comes with the bad trying to get good it comes with the bad sure. and it goes on lifetime after lifetime so here we see the the four kumars they had that they had jnana they had vairagya you know they had knowledge and detachment but they got fully satisfied when they saw the form of the lord and felt these and, and they had these feelings of devotion arising in their hearts and so Again, this is how Bhagavatam is framing the picture for us so that we can get it. If we were confused, if we're debating about what's the highest thing, where, what, where does all this yoga lead to? Well, it's being spelled out for us right here. Mm. Okay, 45. This is the form of the Lord which is meditated upon by the followers of the yoga process, and it is pleasing to the yogis in meditation. It is not imaginary, but factual as proved by great yogis. The Lord is full in eight kinds of achievements, but for others, these achievements are not possible in full perfection. Mm. So this is the form of the Lord which is meditated upon by followers of the yoga process, this form of Lord Vishnu right in the heart. Mm -hmm. And that's spoken about in Bhagavad Gita and in so many places, but there's a fascinating commentary on this one. Now, I'm, I'm gonna pick up uh, somewhere in the middle, okay? 35, yeah. Yeah, it's a long, it's a long purple, but it says five, Prabhupada writes, 5,000 years ago, Lord Krishna recommended yoga practice to Arjuna, but Arjuna frankly expressed his inability to follow the stringent rules and regulations of the yoga system. That's the sixth chapter of the Gita, right? Mm. One should be very practical in every field of activities and should not waste their valuable time in practicing useless gymnastic feats in the name of yoga, right? Like <laughs> do a yoga that's, that- That's me. <laughs> that's well, you know, and, and it's not that it's like, the, the point is, is that... It's me and Lori Pag. It has to lead <laughs> somewhere, right? So he says, real yoga is to search out the four-handed super soul within one's heart and see him perpetually in meditation. Such continued meditation is called samadhi, and the object of this meditation is the four-handed Narayan, Lord Vishnu, with bodily decorations as described in this chapter, Srimad Bhagavatam. If, however, one wants to meditate upon something void or impersonal, it'll take a very long time before they achieve success in yoga practice. That's also Bhagavad Gita, 12th chapter, right? It's even Yoga Sutras, right? Which says that yep. attaining samadhi um, through that type of meditation, it requires not only like intense endeavor, but like super, super intense endeavor. Or, and then it says, or one can surrender to God. 
So Prabhupada continues, we cannot concentrate our mind on something void or impersonal. Real yoga is to fix the mind on the form of the Lord, the four-handed Narayan, who is sitting in everyone's heart. And that is so key and crucial. Now Prabhupada is going to go on here. He's going to talk about it. He's going to talk about realization of how God is within the heart and God is within the every atom and how this gives us the true, the true yogi's vision. Right? He says, by meditation, one can understand that God is seated in, w within one's heart. Even if one does not know it, God is seated within the heart of everyone. Not only is he seated in the heart of the human being, but he's also within the hearts of the cats and dogs. Right? You like that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bhagavad Gita certifies this fact by the declar by the declaration of the Lord Ishvara Sarvabhutanam Hridesha that that the Ishwar, the supreme controller of the world, is seated within the heart of everyone. Not only is he in everyone's heart, but he's also present within the Adam. No place is vacant or devoid of the presence of the Lord. We just had to meditate on this more and more and more and try to see it. That is the statement of the Ishopanishad. God is present everywhere. And his right of proprietorship applies to everything. Mm. Now think about this, right? This like like my soul is within my body and it spreads its consciousness throughout my entire body, right? Like I know what if if, if you come and tap me on the shoulder, I feel it. Raghunath doesn't feel it. I feel it because that's where, because my consciousness has pervaded this. And therefore, in a certain sense, we say this is my body, right? And I have a sense of proprietorship to this body. Why? Because I'm the one conscious within it. If you do something to this body that causes pain, I'm the one that experiences it. So I'm giving a, I'm giving a right of proprietorship to this body. But what Prabhupada is saying here is that just as my consciousness permeates this body, that Krishna's consciousness, through the form of Vishnu, permeates also my body, as well as every other body as the super soul, and is within every atom. So as my consciousness is spread throughout my body, his consciousness is spread throughout everything. And therefore, he's the proprietor of everything. Right? Now, that's the vision of the yogi, right? Mm -hmm. Krishna's consciousness is spread everywhere, and I'm aware and sensitive to his consciousness everywhere and connecting through devotion. Krishna's consciousness. I'm in the Krishna's consciousness. <laughs> yeah, it's all over. So, so, so he writes, God is present everywhere, and his right of proprietorship applies to everything. That means my body is his, because his consciousness is spread through it too. That means my home is his, right? That means my words are his. That means, you know, my wealth, my possessions. Like, this is how we reconnect. You reconnect it all. He says, the feature of the Lord by which he is present everywhere is called Paramatma. Atma means the individual soul, and Paramatma means the individual super soul. Both Atma and Paramatma are individual persons. There's me and there's God, right? The difference between Atma and Paramatma is that the Atma, or the soul, is present only in a particular body, whereas the Paramatma is present everywhere. In this connection, the example of the sun is very nice. We're going to get a little nature analogy. All right. He says, an individual person may be situated in one place, but the sun, even though a similar individual entity, is present on the head of every individual person. Right. So similarly, the, the Paramatma, you know, my soul is in this one body, but the Paramatma, like the sun, is in every body. Mm. In the Bhagavad Gita, this is explained. Therefore, even though the qualities of all entities, including the Lord, are equal, the super soul is different from the individual soul by quantitative power of expansion. Right? His consciousness is spread, expanded everywhere. The Lord or the super soul can expand himself into millions of different forms, whereas the individual soul cannot do so. Are you ready? There's more. Hit me. The super soul, being seated in everyone's heart, can witness everyone's activities, past, present, and future. In the Upanishads, the super soul is described as being seated with, with the individual soul as friend and witness. 
right? And here I think Prabhupada is referring to that Mund Mundaka Upanishad with the, the two birds sitting on the branch, right? One is trying to taste the fruits and one is just witnessing. So we're in the, the body trying to taste the fruits of this world. Part Mama is right in there, seated with us as a friend and as a witness watching us in our endeavors. As a friend, the Lord is always anxious to get back to his friend, the individual soul, and bring them back home, back to Godhead. As a witness, he is the bestower of all benedictions, and he endows each individual with the results of their activities. So he's also that monitor that's kind of like monitoring our, our activities and then bringing us into a situation where we get the results of those activities, whether they're pleasurable or painful. The super soul gives the individual soul all facilities to achieve whatever they desire to enjoy in this material world. Suffering is a reaction to the living entity's propensity to try to lord it over the material world. Right? It's like his consciousness is spread everywhere. The whole world is his body. So I should see it as his and act accordingly. Mm. But when I forget that and I try to take it for myself, then that Paramatma sends us some kind of wake-up call in the form of suffering. Yeah, there's rules of the world. We had this on Sweet Baby Krishna last night. There's yeah, rules, rules of, of this world. world. They're eternal. And you can't break them. They just break you. You break those rules, they break you. It's like, you, oh, yeah, I want to go over the guardrail. I want to drive over that guardrail. Well, that's the rule. You can't. Well, I'm going to. And then you just break yourself. It's not Krishna is not punishing us for our sinful behavior. There's just rules of the road. There's rules when you have this body. There's rules when you have this machine. And we choose to punish ourselves. We're creating right. our bad karma. L L Sweet baby Krishna is not going, naughty, naughty. Now I would punish you. Because <laughs> I don't like you. Because <laughs> I don't like No, Krishna's happy. He's eating sweet balls. He's in love. Right? It, it's we create our own disasters one after another. And we try to blame God, the universe, cruel fate, the government, whatever it is. We are, we are implicated in this karma, and it's giving us a good direction. And Krishna's right. calling us forth. Do you even notice this whole thing is like a, 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 like a rapid river? And it's just like whatever we're doing now, adding bhakti, we're getting sucked more and more down the bhakti stream. The current is pushing us towards connection. It's taking away the things in our life that aren't serving us, that aren't assisting us. It's making them seem so trivial and, 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 and tiny, right? And it's making Krishna, who is this almost like, it's like is, he, is he real? Is he a cartoon? Is he a picture? Is he a photo? Is he a deity? He's making this almost like apparition of Krishna the most solid thing in our life. Mm. It's amazing what's going on right now. <laughs> it's amazing. It's an amazing time of life right now. <laughs> it's so good. Everything is getting tear, torn away except Krishna. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And he's got a divine plan for each and every one of us. That's how he shows his actual love is in this way, you know, and, and, and I could see you're feeling it. You're what you're, you're, you're aware of it. You're, you're waking up to it, you know? Yeah. It's beautiful. It, it's it, beautiful. It, it goes on here. And this is tying right into what you're saying. I think so. He says suffering is a reaction to the living entity's propensity to try to lord it over the material world. But yep. the Lord instructs his friend, the individual soul who is also his son to give up all other engagements and simply surrender unto him for pers for, for for perpetual bliss and an eternal life full of knowledge, right? We're on that, uh, like I said, we're on that, that home stretch to eternity, right? We're on the home stretch! <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> this, this is the last instruction of Bhagavad Gita, the most authorized and widely read book on all varieties of yoga. For a little, little plug there. This is the last word of Bhagavad Gita and the last word in the perfection of yoga. Now, now this is nice. He continues. He says, It is stated in Bhagavad Gita that a person who is always absorbed in Krishna consciousness is the topmost yogi. Verse, Raghu, hot seat. Yogi nam bhavmi sarva sam madganatana madganatana shut up. I don't you tell you. That one? No? That's the one. Okay. Yeah, that's the last verse of the sixth chapter, 647. Great verse. Yeah, the topmost yogi. So it is stated in Bhagavad Gita that a person who is always absorbed in Krishna consciousness is the topmost yogi. What is Krishna consciousness? Okay, what do we mean by that? Yeah, what are we talking, we talking about? Okay, well, here it is. As the individual soul is present by his... This is such an important, important instruction for life. As the individual soul is present by his consciousness throughout his entire body, 
So the super soul of Paramatma is present throughout the whole creation by super consciousness. This super conscious energy, right, the energy of the Paramatma, is imitated by the individual soul who has limited consciousness. So like God is the soul of all creation, mm. and I'm like the soul of this one body. It's the macro and the micro. It's the right. macro. <laughs> right, so this super conscious energy is imitated by the individual soul who has limited consciousness. I can understand what is going on within my limited body, but I cannot feel what is going on in another's body. I am present throughout my body by my consciousness, but my consciousness is not present in another's body. The super soul of Paramatma, however, is present everywhere and within everyone, is also conscious of everyone's existence. The theory that the soul and the super soul are one is not acceptable because it's not confirmed by authoritative Vedic literature. In other words, my consciousness doesn't penetrate everything and never will, and that's okay. You know? And he, so he goes on, this super consciousness can be achieved. He says the individual soul's consciousness cannot act, as, cannot act in super consciousness. This super consciousness can be achieved, however, like in other words, we don't become God, but we can become super conscious. Uh, this, so he says, this super consciousness can be achieved, however, by dovetailing individual consciousness with the consciousness of the Supreme. This dovetailing process is called surrender or Krishna consciousness. From the teachings of Bhagavad Gita, we learn very clearly that Arjuna, in the beginning, did not want to fight with his brothers and relatives, but after understanding Bhagavad Gita, he dovetailed his consciousness with the super consciousness of Krishna. He was then in Krishna consciousness. And I think we're out of time. Woohoo! Yeah. I think we got a lot of hashtags today, a lot of takeaways. A little takeaway, you put them in your pocket, you pull them out in the course of the day when life is getting tough. When you come share to some with a friend. work in the road, you share it with a friend. You, take a you write it down, you take a picture of it, and you share it, and you tag us, and we tag you back, and we reshare it, and we do that all day. <laughs> 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 oh, our pathetic lives. <laughs> Mara, what do you got? What do you got? You got some good takeaways for me? I, I do have some good takeaways. I'm alive right now. What am I doing about it? Ooh, I like that. Okay. That's like an Instagram post. Yeah. I'm alive right now. What am I doing about it? <laughs> the home stretch to eternity. We're on the home stretch. Go. Bhakti goes nice with age. It does. Yeah. Two great, all, two great things that go great together. Yeah, we're all a stone's throw away from death. What legacy can I leave? What legacy can I leave? I love that one. Even the one percent is dying. Oh yes, that's great. <laughs> that's a T-shirt. <laughs> Even the one percent is dying. How about Bill Gates is dying with that? <laughs> uh, we create our own bad karma. We create our own bad karma. We We're getting sucked downstream toward connection with divinity. Yeah, sucked downstream. Sucked down. Yeah. Stream. Does that sound good? Does it sound like we're yeah. a good place or a bad place? <laughs> it's a good thing. We're sucked, sucked down to a beautiful, we're floating, tranquil, we're floating, sucked down sucker into yesterday. a Caribbean <laughs> pond. A sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks there's everybody. Also, for uh, oh, oh. Sorry, Raghu. There's Asana class with Trevor Vaughn for Patreon members at 8 a.m. And then there's two back to recovery group okay. meetings. I, th today. I think you have to share those links on Patreon because they're because yeah, now that we're doing do. the uh, yeah, share those. What links? What links? What links? The links for the Trevor yoga Vaughan. classes because now that we're doing the Sage page. We're not doing that what's up this week anymore, which is where people right. are getting those links, right? Oh, right. right. Although they can go back to the back posts and the links are always okay. the same. But, so. but yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Someone was asking. Why are you guys getting them, a little like, fight right now? Why don't you have a post them there? Fight. Post them, all right? <laughs> well, they're the same. <laughs> <laughs> they could go back like weeks into the thing. Or you could just post them. <laughs> you can post them, Eric. <laughs> <Aaron. laughs> oh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. And remember, it's, it's uh, Wednesday. So Wednesday means you tell a friend. That's tell a friend Friday, but Wednesday you can tell a friend about Bhakti too and spread the word about Wisdom of the Sages. There's some people I met at the picnic who go, I said, how do you hear about this? They said, a friend told me. Oh, and I was like, okay. tell a friend Friday. It must have been. They was must it have on Friday? I don't know if it was Friday. I didn't ask him. But um, tell friends. If you got some friends sitting on a spiritual edge, a precipice of sorts. Precipice. Then maybe you think, you like that? Yeah, th th then maybe you go up to him and say, hey, maybe you should listen to Wisdom of the Sage. 
could change could change your whole damn life. <laughs> Bhagavad Tom is coming life. to our life, and it starts to rip away, shed, scrape, suck, peel <laughs> off this ego, these layers. Oh, the gobstopper. Hey, people can check out the Be On Air podcast. We were on it yesterday. You can check it out on YouTube or Facebook, Be On Air podcast. We're probably going to have some links set up. Uh, there is a link on Patreon. There's a link on our Facebook page. So oh, really? There. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. If you're not a member of our Sage page, if you haven't signed up for our newsletter, go to wisdomofthesages.com, sign up. You'll be we'll, you will be immediately enrolled in a monthly lottery where we mm. give away gold. Actual is that, is that what gold. we do on the five hundredth show? We give away gold. We give away gold <laughs> charity to the gold. to the Brahmins, to okay. the Brahmins, and, and we give away cows. Okay. <laughs> Finally decorated cows. <laughs> decorated with gold. As if someone gave you a cow, like thank you. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you, Super Soap Farm would be cool. Hey, you know what? It's still a lot to take care of a cow. I know. I know. Even if you had the, you got to take care of them. Yeah. 